Last year during Advent to Code, I was comparing my code's runtime to one of my moderator's codes. Mine was written in Java, his was written in Go, so I was a, at a bit of a disadvantage, but nonetheless I still wanted to know how my code compared to his. I was curious how much I could optimize my code, and at one point I switched from for loops to the newer streams that Java implemented in Java 8, and to much to my surprise, it made my code way slower. This made me curious about the efficiency of streams, and I've finally gotten around to testing for loops versus streams and their runtimes and how they compare. Now before I begin, this isn't totally scientific, I guarantee you there are way more ways to get much cleaner results, these are just my thoughts and my experimentation into this topic. To start, I need to set up a system that will allow me to perform a test this code. The goal of the running code will be simply to sum up all the numbers in a list. Not any sort of complex code, but just enough to give me a good comparison between the two methods. The code itself is simple as I create one method that builds up a list of random integers. I'm using random integers in an attempt to prevent the JVM from doing any extra caching or performance changes that eliminate the computation methods as a whole because that would just defeat the purpose of this whole thing. The amount of numbers in the list varies, and I did many tests with 1, 10, 100, 1000, and so on in order to see if the length of the list had any impact on the runtime. With that method complete, I then added the methods for the for loop and stream to take the newly generated list and sum up all the values. There are many methods on the stream class that one could use, I simply chose this code as it was what IntelliJ recommended me use instead of a for each loop. I thought about doing more tests with each of the different methods to solve this, but maybe that'll be for another day. Anyways, now with the methods complete, we need to add a timer that will allow us to time the runtime of these methods and collect the data that we will be needed to compare them. The timer I implemented is also pretty simple and provides two methods for timing. One starts a timer and the other stops it and adds the elapsed duration in nanoseconds to a list that will store all the times to be processed later. Back to the main code, I added a main method that creates a timer and also has a for loop that allowed me to run these tests multiple times to get a better feel of how the two methods compare over many iterations. I chose 100,000 iterations because it seemed just large enough to give me a good average, but not run forever. But also because while running this initially to test the code, I noticed that as I increased the number of total iterations, the averages went way down, sometimes even cutting the average time in half. Something was not right, and it turns out it's because it actually takes time for the JIT system to actually fully compile and optimize the code. It doesn't do this till it iterates a few thousand times. I'm purposely not explaining why because I myself don't fully know why this happens, but I will leave a link to the Stack Overflow discussion that I found useful for this and actually made changes to my code based upon. These changes I made were to simply iterate over the code about 30,000 times before you start timing its performance. After I implemented this into the system, and after making a method in the timer class to give me these 5 data points, I was set to start running the code and gathering data. And well it turns out they basically run at about the same timings. I mean the stream is slightly higher, but we are talking in the realm of nanoseconds, 1 millisecond worst case, and that's not really significant enough with my unscientific environment to call it a difference. You can ignore the maxes as there are infinite reasons why code can get interrupted or run slow for a few of the 100,000 iterations, so that stat is basically irrelevant for this. But hold on, I think I'm getting away from the reason I started all this. My code from Adventic Code was running way slower. The stream was only having one iteration per execution, it didn't have the 30,000 iterations beforehand for it to get optimized before I timed it. So what if I do the opposite? Instead of iterating 100,000 times per execution to get a more consistent average, what if I only iterate 3 times per execution, and run the program 5 times per method to get a sample size? What would I get then? Well, the results are actually pretty surprising. Looking at only the first iteration of each program execution, we can see the stream is not even in the same realm as the for loop, over 10 times slower in fact. But the more surprising thing is, is if we look at the second and third iterations of these runs, the stream does a complete 180 and is actually about half the runtime as the for loop. The for loop does improve on its own, but not at all that much, especially compared to the stream's improvement. So what gives? I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I know the answer, but just think about it. Java is a just-in-time compiled language. Yes, it's compiled bytecode, but if you actually look at bytecode, you'll see that it's this weird hybrid between assembly and Java. 
kind of hard to explain. But what I'm trying to say is that there are a lot of processing the JVM has to do before it executes and further caches or optimizes the code. And the more complex the code, the more it has to work on that first process pass. A for loop is pretty basic or primitive in that there is not much for the JVM to process further. Streams on the other hand? Well that's a whole other class with its own methods that probably call other methods and further logic making it magnitudes more complex than a for loop. This all leads to a much slower first iteration. Why is the second iteration faster? Well, I have no idea. Maybe Java does some under the hood improvements that make its execution faster when it optimizes, but honestly, I don't know. If you know, feel free to leave a comment down below and maybe teach me something. And if you like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and leave a comment if you like this kind of video and like to see more like it. But at any rate, hopefully you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys all next time. Peace out.